don't want to cut that out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I know. Um, but let me think. Hey, what's going on, guys? My name is Mikey, and welcome to part two of a three-part series for how my friend Mike was able to get a 525 on his MCAT. So be sure to stick around to the end of the video if you want to see a couple bonus tips that Mike's going to give that helped him make the difference between a 515 score and a 525 score. So without any further ado, let's kind of get started. So Mike, what resources did you use when you studied for the MCAT? So I had utilized almost exclusively the Princeton Review for most of my studying. Okay. Um, and honestly, mostly good things, like the content was very thorough except for their psychology section i would highly recommend using a different resource for the psychology section yeah. i didn't realize that a lot later into my studying how lackluster it was until i started doing the um, actual amc package uh, which i saved till the very end i talked about that in another video but getting that amc that'll package, be in the last video yeah. that'll be in the last video. yeah the very last, yeah for everything else really really good content coverage the tests however very difficult and not representative but I actually, it was kind of nice because those questions are a lot harder, especially for the car section. They use a lot of double negatives, which is very confusing when the car's package is already super confusing. Yeah, double negatives, I hated those. Yeah, I hated those. yeah but like, see, imagine a whole test of that. Oh my gosh. Um, I, I see a double negative and I wait like a minute just trying to like, figure just out trying like, to, like, what am I looking for? Exactly. So confused. So I had thought these Princeton Review tests that I had gotten, they were representative, but I was getting like, for the first two months, I was getting like a 505, 507, 510 like that the max I got was a 510 on these Princeton review mm -hmm. tests my goal right from the beginning was to get above a 520 so this was very demoralizing for a lot of it I was very like oh my goodness like I'm like working so hard but I'm not like getting the gains that I wanted but it was only until that I switched over to the the AMC package that I realized like the, my first AMC practice test like test number one I'd gotten a like 518 519 oh, so, you're so, happy. so I was like that that jump was Crazy, insane. insane so i was like oh my goodness and then it clicked like oh princeton review is those tests are a lot harder but they prepared me for those the actual package for sure yeah so mike you said in the last video that you did a practice test every week and kind of like what i did so how many practice tests did you do how did you review them what was your plan when it came to practice tests so i did like we said in the previous video i did one almost every week the video is going to be linked above right here right or there, here right one of them one of them you'll see it in where one of them. it is i did like one almost every single week and then at the very like leading up i did a test every other day once all my content review was ooh, done leading ooh. up to the actual date so you did um, a lot i did a lot so i did around i want to say like 12 or 13 ooh. full length tests a lot of them being princeton review ones which were hard yeah they and were. my tests they would always be the same the way i took a test was always the exact same i'd wake up at the same time i'd shower i'd have breakfast and i would just kind of go through my steps go on a run exercise in the morning before for my test and then I would actually sit this is kind of weird but I would sit at my desk and do nothing for like because it would take me about like I did it at the Oakville location like the test so it would be like a 45 minute drive so I would sit there and like just listen to music for like 45 minutes just chilling there because I would simulate the drive oh that makes going sense. to because wow, I so you really simulated everything everything because like the, I would be so ready for test day then after my I was done my test I wouldn't have a snack with me I didn't have water with me while I was writing I'd have my snacks and my water during my breaks but after my test I would not do nothing the rest of the night I wouldn't look at my test I'd look at my score obviously but I wouldn't review anything that night yeah, yeah, yeah. like I obviously I'm gonna look at my score but I didn't review anything that night I would just kind of take the rest of the night off Sunday I would go through my entire test the entire day in my opinion you should spend as much time reviewing your test as much as you took to take the totally test. Agree. Yeah. Totally agree. It's so important. It's because so the review is where all the learning happens. Exactly. It's and since I was doing one every single week, there was stuff on my test that I would have never seen before, which was great because first I would review my sections and then see okay, not just what I got wrong, but what I got right, how I got it right, and if it was just a guess. Because if you would just guess and you got it right and then you don't look at how that question yeah, is right, exactly. you gain nothing from that question. For sure. For sure. And it was great because you could go over okay, I've learned this like when I was studying and I was able to apply it great my knowledge is pretty good but or if you got a question wrong on something you've already studied 
Oh my goodness, I gotta go back and look at this. Of course. I have a question. So when you did, um, uh, when you reviewed, did you write anything down or you just kind of did it and then you just went? Oh, I would always it? write things down. I'd, I'd always mark, especially the things that I'd already reviewed but gone wrong, I'd always mark like, oh, need to review this section. That makes sense. The things I hadn't seen but still got wrong, I wouldn't really worry too, too much about those. Like I'd noted it. I'm like, okay, that's on like the next section later. Noted, like, cause it kind of primes yeah, your yeah, mind. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. That makes sense. But yeah, I, the really big thing was for the things I'd already studied and still got wrong. I was like, okay, time to go back on this. And then that's where my week, my Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, like I said in the previous video, every day would be kind of like just one thing. So I would like start my day off reviewing. So say I did everything right in chemistry, I would start doing my new stuff. But say there were some questions that, oh, I kind of messed up that I've already studied. I'd start my day like in the morning after I've eaten breakfast and worked yeah, out sure. with that stuff and then move on to the new stuff. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Okay, mm -hmm. so so you really you really went in depth on, on reviewing. And I, that's, in my opinion, that's where the most of the learning is gonna come from. Facts, so you're, the studying you. is only going to just prepare your mind, but the reviewing and seeing and applying is where everything. Honestly, review days were fun too. Like, like I didn't oh, have to like, study, it was kind of just like chilling, yeah. going through the questions like, oh, I got this right, mm, it's like, yeah. you feel nice. I had music going on. No, it was a vibe. It was yeah, a it, was definitely, vibe. it was definitely yeah. a sick vibe. Before we move on, we need to have a quick sip of coffee. Should we say like the, for the coffee thing? Yeah, we well, could say it again. It's yeah. okay. You could say it. Nothing like that first sip of coffee. <laughs> so, Mike, what was your strategy for chem, bio, and psych? I know the strategy for cars we're gonna include in the later video, so we won't discuss that now. Mm -hmm. So, for bio, I already had a really strong background in bio. I'd taken genetics, which is big. I had taken human physiology, which was also quite big. Huge, huge. huge. I didn't take it. Yeah, I, I had to like, learn it from scratch. I, would, I thought it was wild that you like didn't take physics or human and physics before learn, taking yeah, it. And you had to learn it yourself. Scratch. That's wild. But I had taken a lot of these classes, so I already had a background on them. So my strategy for going through them was I was going through my books, like while I was reading every single like day, every single one, I'd go through my content. And if I'd already seen this content before, like a lot of the genetics, I barely looked at any of the genetics or the biochemistry. Oh, yeah. I kind of like skimmed through it. I would still read my content like in my Princeton Review books, because Princeton Review for those are actually quite good. Very detail oriented, which is nice when you have these random details in the test. And I kind of just like read through them, skimmed like, okay, I've seen this, I've seen this. And then when I would get to something new, like something that was new was the types of radiation, especially in chemistry. Yeah, we ever learned that before. Yeah, like, we gamma never learned like, gamma, beta, yeah. beta plus, Alpha. beta minus. Yeah, all that stuff was brand new to me. So I would like sit down and like, okay, if this undergoes beta decay, what does it become? Things like that. I would take a lot of notes on my iPad. But uh, yeah, so chemistry and biology, because of that like in-depth background, were kind of similar. Physics, a lot of practice. A lot yeah, of practice key. for that's physics. Key. Oh my goodness. So I had taken physics one and physics two. So I had this background, but the MCAT applies these questions in such a different way than you would have in your classes. For physics, practice is the best way um, with actual questions. Don't just do like the problem sets you might have. Do actual passages because a big difference between MCAT physics problems and your normal physics problems because for the MCAT you have to figure out the information. A lot of the times physics mm -hmm. problems just kind of give them to you. You have to figure out what you're using. And right? what equation to use. Usually, honestly, a, a, another tip that you could use is when you see the units in the multiple choice question, oh, go based huge. off of the units. Like mm -hmm. if the units is like, kilograms over a meter squared times, I don't know, like bars, like for mm -hmm. example, for, mm -hmm. for pressure. Mm -hmm. Then in the passage, it gives those like examples, literally divide them and you'll get the answer. That's Actually the, on my actual MCAT, I forgot an equation, but using the units. You got it. I, I, I was able to figure out like, oh, what am I dividing here? Exactly, To yeah. get these units, and then that gave me the right that, answer. That would literally give you like three or four questions in chem phys automatics. But psychology. Uh, very term based. I'd only taken one psychology course at the time. Uh, physiological psych that I'm actually taking right now would have been super, super useful. Yeah, that's true. Like, yeah. more neurons, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. I'd taken introductory psychology. So that covered a lot of the cognitive, a lot of physical, like a lot of basic psychology, but it'd been like first year since I took that. Mm. So terms were super, super huge, uh, especially for sociology. Uh, it, was, it was a lot of memorization. Like a social lot of norms, memorization. Uh, so I remember sitting with my mom. My mom, super shout out, shout out to mom. And sitting with her, and she was just reading off terms, just this word, and she'd be like, okay, what does this mean? And then you would have to explain it. And then I would just explain it, and then I would use it as an, in an example. Okay, Mike, no. final thing we want to discuss, right. what are some bonus tips you had? I didn't really get a chance to check over my cars, which really kind of like psyched me out. But honestly, that's kind of better, because normally your first instinct is what's best. Is Go what's your best. Go, Go with your gut. gut. Cause we'll get to this in the next cars video, but yes. don't part rationalize, three, three. don't rationalize a wrong answer. Of That's course. basically it. So many things I would have loved to learn when I was studying. One, 
like we said, use Reddit. Reddit is oh, so bro. great. You, Reddit, yeah, it's literally just like a page of just people going through the exact same struggles you are. People make memes on there. They're actually kind, kind of like, to everyone's kind. Like no one's like so rude. nice. Yeah. Like it's such a like a positive Reddit. Of course, people are so nice helping you out. And with the actual AMC practice passages, they have all the answers. They there. have all the answers. If you literally there. like copy any any question on AMC and paste it into Reddit. There's a Reddit a breakdown. Thread. There's yeah. a breakdown. There's a break every single question. Because a lot of the AMC actual practice passage stuff, there's an explanation, but the explanation is usually so bad. Yeah, it's like, like it's literally just like this is the right answer because it is. And yeah, it's like, like in I, physics. I, yeah. Well, the answer to this is because if you multiply these two, you'll get that. And you're well, like, why? Nice. Why'd you, why'd like, you why do you do that? Yeah. yeah. So with Reddit, huge, huge bonus. Absolutely check it out. Another huge thing is don't just focus on learning the content. Practice actually doing the test. Taking the MCAT. Taking the MCAT is half content, half just learning how to take the MCAT. That's we were talking about this before. Yeah. You can get, if you knew the content perfectly, 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 you would, could get like a 126, 127. But if you want to go for that, you know, one thirty, higher winter, 20s, 130s, 120s, yeah. you, you want to be proficient at taking the MCAT, reading these passages, learning how to allot your time, working under pressure, because that's what the MCAT is. You're working under a time constraint, you're working under pressure, because these are hard questions. Fuck. I simulated between me and Mike, actually. We did well in the sciences, and I think the reason for that is mm -hmm. all the practice tests we did. Mm -hmm. Like, I did 12, and I think you did 12 or 13, yeah. something like I'm that. Most, so, yeah. like, when you come to actual test day, it's like, this is nothing. It's like, this is so short. Like, like my day's free now. Like, what yeah. do I do now? Uh -huh. Like, yeah. I didn't feel any burnout. At like, all. At all. No, normally, when after I take my, like, the seven and a half, I felt like, oh, man, I'm kind of, like, tired right now. Like, I, I need a break. My brain is working hard, but, like, like after doing that like 12 times i kind of got used to it so but after the real test day like like i felt like i could do that again like yeah, i was like, so like ready I, I totally agree with that like like especially because i did it at 6 30 a.m so i finished like when i was done it was like it was like 12 30 so like the day just got started i'm like i can do everything oh. in the whole day uh -huh. like i remember i finished and then i went and golfing after my friends oh, really? yeah golfing? like i was chilling i yeah. had nothing to do mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. thank you so much mike for joining us today really do appreciate it mm -hmm. this is part two of a three-part series if you did enjoy it and you do like our videos uh my videos are kind of around productivity and education if you do like it please consider subscribing down below it does help us out a lot please also like the video if you did enjoy it stay tuned for the future video thanks for watching cheers cheers